हेलो वेलकम टू द टॉपिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज ज्योग्राफी क्लास टेन द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द सेकेंडरी सेक्टर द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ मेनी लार्ज स्केल मीडियम स्केल स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रीज पॉइंट्स आउट द इंडेक्स ऑफ प्रॉस्पेरिटी ऑफ ए कंट्री many industries that means lot of employment what is manufacturing the term manufacturing refers to the processing of raw material or the parts into finished goods through the use of tools human labor machinery chemical processing etc we know extraction of raw material is called as primary sector conversion of raw material into finished goods is known as a secondary sector or the manufacturing industry and making these products available to the people for the consumption is the service sector which does so much of service transport communication real estate we have seen in the sectors of indian economy manufacturing allows businesses to sell finished products at a higher cost than the value of raw material because the process of manufacturing needs many ingredients right from electricity water to transformation to technology and many more large scale manufacturing allows for goods to be for the mass consumption mass production leads to mass consumption using assembly line process we have seen henry ford's assembly line process and uh, we have learned how the bulk of production was done at a time that needs advanced technology and very core important assets efficient techniques of manufacturing enable to take advantage of economies of the scale of production and we can take the factors of production at a low cost make them available at a low cost we have seen the coming up of the industrial revolution we have seen how people traveled from villages the inventions and discoveries and the manufacture movement of people in making of the global world so the industrial revolution led to mass production assembly line uh, manufacturing use of mechanization or the machines and large scale quantities of goods are produced at a low cost the financial analysts uh, they study the system ism and manufacturing report every month and as a potential early indicator of the economy's health where are we standing are we in the deficit or we in the surplus are we able to meet the demand with the latest techniques and the capital so let us go into the importance of the manufacturing industries it is called the backbone of the economy general economic development of a country is foreseen because the manufacturing industries not only help in modernizing agriculture but they stand as the backbone of the country why because they reduce the heavy dependence on agriculture and transfer the people to secondary and tertiary sector we know that india is an agrarian economy but number of people who are depending on the agriculture are all not contributing why we have seen the causes of disguised labor in the economics part industrial development is a pre condition it is uh, for the eradication of unemployment when unemployment is eradicated poverty is tackled in the country 
there will be better standard of living and the country will progress simply more manufacturing industries it is an index a pointer towards economic development so we need public sector economy we need joint sector economy we are inviting the foreign capital and what is the importance of foreign capital we have seen in globalization the coming up of mncs the industries and the joint sector ventures in india they are operating on a large scale and they have created lot of employment opportunities even they are moving to the interior tribal areas and some of the core industries which can be the products can be raw material can be taken from the forest based industries and create employment for those people they can be trained in skill development and they can be better producers export of manufactured goods expands uh, trade and commerce and brings in much needed foreign exchange for the country when we export to other countries we get the foreign exchange and that results indicate the country's development the countries that transform their raw material into wide variety of finished goods of raw and uh, uh, good quality raw material transformed into better quality finished goods uh, meeting the international demand better quality iso products these all are leading to the prosperity of india more of foreign exchange reserves are coming once the industries are flourishing we can go for diversification many of the branches are coming up of and many sectors are opened and lot of employment opportunities are there agriculture and industry are interdependent we know that the fertilizers etc are coming from the industry the pump sets the fertilizers the seeds the drillers every right from the seeder to the harvester everything is coming from the industry and the raw materials to the industry are coming from the agriculture to the industry the pumps industries are getting the raw materials the seeds everything are interdependent insecticide pesticide plastic pvc pipes machines tools are coming from industry to the farmers and farmers in turn are getting the product enhancers or the product boosters in fact all the elements of green revolution are coming from the industry contribution of industry to national income the share of manufacturing sector in the gross de- domestic product has been stagnant at 17% over the last two decades the total contribution of industry to the gdp is 27% out of which 10% comes from mining quarrying electricity and gas the growth of the manufacturing sector had been 7% in the last decade since 2003 the growth rate has been 9 to 10% per annum the desired growth rate is much much higher we are reaching in the next decade to 12% this is the pie graph showing the service sector primary sector and the manufacturing sector just 17% mining quarrying etc 10% National Manufacturing Competitiveness Council and this council has been set up with the objective of improving the productivity with the proper policy interventions by the government and renewed efforts by the industry the government shall not leave the private sector to exist on their own and make excessive profits this nmcc manufacturing competitiveness council was set up in 
as a part of common minimum program of the erstwhile government to provide continuing forum of policy dialogue to energize and sustain the growth of manufacturing industry there shall be continuous growth of manufacturing industries and employment opportunities should be created world class level meeting the global market challenge the factors enabling the location of industry are complex the availability of all the factors at a place is a real endowment of the nature so the availability of raw material labor capital power market etc it is rarely possible to find all these factors at one place consequently the manufacturing activity tends to they logically think and what is very feasible for them viable for them they go to that appropriate place and locate these industries in those regions they are available then arrangements can be done for factors which are available at low cost then pull up everything then start the activity of production most of the factors like movement of the people from villages to the urban centers uh, urbanization and to the industries which are located this is basically the industrial estates program which was started and uh, that was meant to save the residential areas from being polluted the raw material power land transport labor capital market these are the essential elements for the location of the industry the locational factors we need to learn this diagram children so what are the inputs the inputs are the land labor capital entrepreneurship or the entrepreneurship whatever infrastructure transport communication factory and the movement of uh, water electricity market area all these things available to the factory and then the factory gives the output movement of the finished products and that is going to the market and finally we get money in exchange so we need existence of all these factors many industries tend to come together share these locational advantages in the city share market area share locational advantage share technology share every every aspect required for the industry and that sharing or coming together the hub or the urban center providing all these basic communities they are called as agglomeration economies agglomeration economies gradually a large industrial agglomeration takes place many industries are coming together and they are providing one another with all these aspects of banking insurance transport labor consultants financial advisors market area storage facility agents all these things coming together available at one place helping one another the center for all this is called as agglomeration economy so industries are classified on the basis of raw material capital ownership and the bulk or heaviness of the industry let us see so on the basis of raw material we classify agro based mineral based on the basis of capital investment large scale small scale even medium scale is there cottage is also there on the basis of ownership public sector private sector joint sector cooperative sector also we have and on the basis of bulk material or heaviness or the weight of the material we classify heavy industries light industries agro based industries agro based industries we know that those industries which are getting their raw material from agriculture and allied activities agriculture horticulture crops cultivation of fruits and vegetables and converting them into preservatives 
food processing, jams, beverages, all these things. Agro-based industries include industries related to textile, sugar, paper, vegetable, oil. These industries use agricultural products as their own raw material. They comprise of cotton textile, woolen, silk, synthetic, jute, etc. We have an image here for a clear-cut distinction. The textile industry, one of the foremost industry, it is uh, occupying a unique position in the Indian economy. It contributes significantly to the industrial production, 14% employment generation, 35 million persons are directly and uh, they are engaged and it is the second largest after the agriculture and foreign exchange is earning agricultural industry it is and uh, it is getting foreign exchange earning uh, of 24.6 percent we know that Ahmedabad was called the manchester of india impact of the world war one we have seen one of the oldest industry this one contributes four percent towards the gdp it is the only industry in the country which is self-reliant dependent on itself and its uh, complete value chain right from raw material to the highest value or added the fiber which is produced in different qualities uh, that undergoes through all the stages spinning uh, weaving knitting dyeing we have seen all this stapler fuller carding all this uh, in the age of industrialization children the same thing here after making the yarn then the making of the cloth then the garments the garments are available in the market so this uh, is the textile industry providing ample opportunities the cotton textile industry one of the ancient industries here we had handloom today also handloom occupies a significant place and uh, its uh, concentration we know that Mumbai Ahmedabad region around 80 percent of these are private sector because uh, now it is located with the cooperative agencies uh, and uh, many of them are nearly with four to ten looms uh, and this industry is growing vastly in Mumbai, Ahmedabad or Maharashtra, Gujarat regions because the climate is very, very favorable. The port facility, the labor, the sunshine and 210 frost free days we have studied about it and its growth in the agriculture chapter. What are the reasons for the concentration of Mumbai, Ahmedabad region for the concentration of cotton industry or Gujarat, Maharashtra region for the location of cotton industry? It's a very important concept, children. Most times it has been tested. The cotton textile is highly located in this industry from the beginning because that region is very favorable availability of raw cotton in Gujarat Maharashtra labor availability is very very cheap moist climate humid climate frost free days 210 frost free days banking facilities availability of port and excellent hinterland well connected roadways railways to the port and carrying this material the features of the cotton textile industry the special features of the cotton textile industry in india are one of the foremost oldest largest industry you can directly take it as an answer children it is a widespread industry found almost in all states of india the industry provides employment uh, opportunities both in rural and urban areas this industry 
provides employment opportunities both in rural as well as in urban area industry accounts for the largest proportion of foreign exchange because the best quality of cotton the print the complicated print the intricate designs the handloom has extensive demand even today what are the problems of the weaving sector the weaving knitting processing units uh, cannot uh, use much of high quality yarn that is produced in our country because that is exported and some of the large and the modern factories in these segment they are utilizing most of the production is fragmented into small units they cater to the local markets this mismatch between the large scale and the small scale is a very big back drawback that is a loophole to the industrial growth as a result many of the spinners they export the yarn while the apparel garment manufacturers have to import fabric because the best of the fabric is going to the other countries there is shortage of material and sometimes we need to go for import the problems of the cotton textile industry most of the production is fragmented or broken into pieces small units which cater only to local markets weaving knitting processing units cannot use much of the high quality yarn as it is exported to other countries scarcity of good cotton and outdated machines they are obsolete lot of repairs are to be done and erratic power supply which is not very regular low productivity of the labor labor are not skilled and trained and this industry receiving stiff competition from the synthetic fiber industry are some of the major problems faced by this industry children you can directly take down this uh, lines and that will tell you the problems of cotton textile industry one of the questions which was asked many times in the board export of the uh, yarn to so many countries uh, which uh, have been significantly uh, trading with india for a large large time that is a plus point uh, to the country next we have the jute industry one of the greatest industry after the partition we saw that 3/4 of this industry the growing areas have been going to bangladesh the east pakistan india is the largest producer of raw jute and jute bag stand as second place because the first is the bangladesh there are about 70 jute mills in india most of these are located in west bengal mainly along the banks of the hugli river and the first jute mill was set up near kolkata in the year 1955 sorry it's 1855 1855 jute mill 1854 the cotton mill after partition 1947 jute mills uh, remained in india but 3/4 of the jute producing area or growing areas went to bangladesh so we need the raw material the factors responsible for the location of jute industry are these these are the most essential factors for the location of jute industry in the hugli basin number 1 hugli basin abundant water availability proximity or the nearness of the jute producing areas inexpensive water water transport availability is very very cheap both inland waterways and also excellent network of roadways railways waterways 
they facilitate the movement of this raw material to the mills abundant water for processing of raw jute they require more than 200 days for retting retting is soaking the crop in water and that kind of water is available in this hugli basin processing of raw jute requires cheap labor and this cheap labor is available from the nearby area so what are the factors the factors location in hugli basin because of proximity or the nearness uh, uh, to jute producing areas inexpensive water supply excellent network of roadways and railways and this facilitated the movement of raw material to the mills and the cheap labor which is coming from the nearby areas adjoining states connected states bihar orissa uttar pradesh jharkhand region and urban facilities the cities providing banking insurance port facility and export of jute goods is happening it is a biodegradable element and it is having huge demand for this crop so the jute carpets the packing material high production cost because almost one year time is taken for the product to be released stiff competition it is facing in the international market and also competition from the synthetic substitutes still its biodegradable element has lot of demand for it so the government came up with national jute policy in the year 2005 another three marks answer very important it formulated the objectives number 1 to increase the productivity number 2 improving the quality number 3 ensuring good prices to the farmers and number 4 the yield per hectare has to be enhanced these are the core objectives of the government what are the steps taken to protect this industry this industry as we have seen the objectives increase the productivity in, improve the quality good prices for these farmers as they spend their hard work toil hard one full year therefore their yield per hectare has to be enhanced they should be paid well the main markets are going to usa canada russia you united arab countries and many more and the globalization of this product because of its eco friendly nature biodegradable element and once again creating more and more opportunities for this industry we can look at the map here the location of uh, cotton woolen silk industries the next important industry is the sugar industry and we know that we have a very important position in the world india stands second in the world and uh, it is a producer but uh, first in the production of good and kandasari kandasari and good are the by products the raw materials used in the industry is bulky the haulage uh, in in haulage its sucrose content reduces children haulage means this is the cane and inside you have the hollowness here here is the sucrose content if you cut the cane like this you have a hollowness uh, fiber like thing and when you chew it you get the sweet thing and that is that gives the sucrose content so when we take this and travel for long distance that sucrose content will dry so the location of sugar industry at the sugar growing areas is the most essential factor 
if the industry is very far the sugar content will evaporate they will dry it will be of no use so location is very very important in vicinity or proximity to the sugar growing areas there are over 460 mills in the country spread over uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh gujarat etc and 60% mills are in uttar pradesh bihar this industry is seasonal in nature so when the growing season happens immediately the crushing also has to be done but why is the sugar industry moving towards the south why is the sugar industry moving towards the south west so this region maharashtra and the deccan plateau region so these mills are moving towards the south shifting towards the south because they are concentrating in the southern and western region climate is very suitable and nearness to the industry high sucrose content is available climate ensures that longer crushing season is available and lot of sucrose content is coming out so all these factors are providing the sugar industry to shift and they are operated by the cooperatives the cooperatives do not aim for profit they enable the availability of the product at a price which is affordable and they don't aim at exploitation they give congenial atmosphere so now what are the problems of the sugar industry this industry includes challenges it is seasonal in nature throughout the year this work cannot happen due to which less profit other times the industry has to close down old efficient obsolete methods of production transport to delay in reaching the cane to the factory will decrease the sucrose content so transport should be ef- excellent and efficient the bag gas are not used properly so after the crushing the product which is coming out the leftover product with that the fuel is made which is called as bag gas so that is not put into proper usage there is wastage done these are all the problems so we shall continue with the mineral based industries in the next part i hope this is clear thank you children many of the answers are already available in the slides please listen with a pen and a book keeping in front of you take down the points and prepare all the best thank you god bless